So in our last session of the entire Innovex Pi stage, we have the privilege to show you four amazing teams from the French Tech. The French Tech is the collective name for all those who are working in the French startup market, driven by new generation of entrepreneurs, investors, engineers, designers, and other talented people. Now we have the honor to invite Mr. Benoit Goudet, the director of French office in Taiwan. Mr. Goudet is going to share four amazing startup teams with us in this session. Please give a big welcome to Mr. Goudet. French Tech Initiative. Uh, French Tech 它是二零一三年法国政府和法国企业一起合作一起啊启动的一个计划这个计划的目的只是为了呃推动啊就是为了支持创业法国的创业也是为了呃呃鼓励呃就支持那些新创公司在法国可是其实这不是一个传统的计
Uh, I think we start with, uh, hmm? we, we start, our, um, we start with Thank you very much. I want to make sure that it works this time. Okay, thank you. So, thank you to the French Tech to invite us. So, um, as you've seen, we all have the sweater, so as a gift. And uh, I'm sure uh, they have a booth over there, so you, you can also meet them. So, I'm going to present a company, which is a two years old company that we created with a group of entrepreneurs called Arrival Technology. So, this is uh, the uh, olfactory and gustatory sensor uh, company. So, we are developing an electronic nose. So, why uh, developing an electronic nose? Uh, the idea is that you, have, uh, you are all using a way or another different kind of sensor related to different senses. So, of course, uh, for sight with camera, for hearing with microphone. And today there is no um, uh, olfactory sensor corresponding to the sense of olfaction. So, there are many applications that uh, even you can think of, okay, uh, in different fields, industrial and also uh, uh, consumer field, so uh, environment is a big uh, issue with uh, olfactory pollution, food, flavor, uh, fragrances, quality control. Uh, in this business, they are using a lot uh, panel of testers because they don't have good sensor to analyze the sensorial quality of, uh, uh, of, the, of the products. So the dog nose we discussed earlier, obviously, is a big challenge. Uh, it's not for us right now. It will take longer to have the same sensitivity and specificity than the dog knows. Also, we are starting some development uh, uh, comparing uh, what we, the dog can do for medical application. Actually, the dog, the dog sometimes is used to do medical diagnostic. Okay? And so another application is the loss of the sense of smell for which uh, we will uh, develop in partnership with a pharmaceutical company, a product that eventually will be launched early next year. Behind all these fields, you can imagine also some consumer application. There is a lot of demand from the home appliance industry to put these kind of sensors in fridges, uh, but also in oven to follow recipe. So this is what it will look like, the green uh, version early next year. Uh, we were able to produce, uh, and I will explain the technology today, so quite a, a few uh, prototypes, uh, so, such as the, the, the gray one here. So it was developed, the company, by a group of multidisciplinary entrepreneurs, uh, including Sam Guillaume, who comes from the sensor, sensor industry, he used to build a company in France called Movea, which was a motion sensor. Um, uh, the main founder, uh, scientific founder, are from the uh, lab called CEA in Grenoble, which is a very good uh, technology center. So they are chemists, right? Chemists, pharmacists, because this technology, actually, we adapted from uh, biology. I come from biotech as well. I used to have a biotech uh, company before. So we've been working on this for a little bit more than two years. Uh, from an idea that was given to me by scientists from the MIT work, working on olfactory receptor. It's really a project where we are trying to mimic the way that the nose works. Okay? So olfactory receptors are proteins inside the nose that can detect smells. And of course, uh, for this kind of project, you have to build a database to try to simulate what's happening in the brain. So uh, the technology itself uh, has a very uh, bad name. It's called surface plasmon uh, resonance. So it's an optic technology, an optic technology on which we are grafting, as uh, it's imaged here, a set of 44 biosensors. So it's real biological molecules, biochemical molecules that we put on the top of the sensor and that will be involved in um, the discrimination of the different smells. Okay, but it's an imaging technology, as I was saying, optic. So basically, we are taking images of what's happening. And this is an example of an image so, uh, where the, the white spots correspond to the biochemical sensor which attract the odors. So we are trying, of course, with the software to simplify these signals, this pattern, and try to make some kinds of barcodes to put in the database. So, uh, the, the informatic part is very important. Uh, eventually, all sensors will be connected to the same database, okay? So that we can also make good use of uh, results obtained from different applications and to optimize uh, the, the algorithm, the recognition algorithm. So, and this is what we are doing right now during industrialization to put all the, the, the results all together. So, many markets 
Uh, maybe the biggest one will be in the field of consumer with uh, smart home appliance. Smart city is also quite a big challenge uh, to have this kind of uh, sensor in the city to better manage uh, waste uh, management, for instance. Of course, the, the main uh, market today is still gas detector because uh, this is the existing one. All the others are pretty new, including uh, Anosmia. So, uh, again, um, think about what you could do uh, if uh, you could not only have access to this sensor, but also display the results on the phone. So um, we may actually uh, put it, and I was discussing with Jeff from Block, uh, at some time inside a watch or a phone. We are not sure. I mean, right now, the sensor is a, a little bit bigger than this. So it, can, it does, does not fit in, inside a phone, but uh, there is a big demand from the phone industry to have access to this technology. So this is what we have, um, just to show that we have a real uh, prototypes, okay, it's just prototypes. So this is the technology itself. Um, we can, uh, we, we, for some clients, we will have to do the full device, including the casing, but for others, uh, they will just buy the, the sensor, right? So that we can uh, adapt the sensor to the fridge. And the key piece, the key component is the prism. So this prism, actually, we will produce uh, in, a, in our company in France, whereas we are looking for partners to produce the, uh, the wool uh, part here. So uh, actually, some of the team was in Taiwan this week to evaluate uh, optics company who can help us because it's quite tricky. So it's very high level um, optics. Uh, the electronic part um, is not too complex. So, so this we can do uh, anywhere. So I think I'm getting to the end of it. So that's just to show that we did some uh, manufacturing of prototypes. There, there was a big demand, so we had to produce 20 prototypes and uh, selling evaluation kit. Even though sometimes for new sensor you have to give um, them for evaluation, we, we actually were able to sell them. Thank you. Uh, so this is what we have done, achieved so far. Okay. So uh, including some partnership, um, and uh, we will announce next week that we have also raised some funds, but I uh, will keep that for next week. So the address market, to, to summarize, uh, this, those are real pictures that we took on the field, uh, meaning that this is not only in the lab, of course, but uh, inside the kitchen and also uh, on the field. Thank you. The, a few examples to finish. So. Um, I think some of the examples that we have on this slide, so of course some are quite original. One of my colleagues did a baby diapers uh, recording. So we did that for people who cannot smell, right? I think it's quite obvious that for people who cannot smell, you have to bring this at home and be able even to record um, shoes odor, body odors, because it's a main issue for them. They don't smell anything. But it gives idea. I mean, uh, from, from this, I received some contacts during the CES, but here as well, of people who would like to have access to this sensor to develop new application for consumer. So this is really the chemical part. You cannot read anything, but just to show that it's universal. And just to finish uh, my talk. Thank you very much. Hi. So firstly, I would like to thank the French Tech. So uh, we are very pleased to be here uh, today with Bell and & Wyzen. And uh, I would like to thank more because also today, during this week, it wa we was also in Russia for the French Tech. And uh, we was elected the, during 10 startups, the best startup for the Russia tour. So I think we are close with the French Tech because we was also in, uh, in CES uh, this year. So it was also a great show. So, so thank you very much for the French Tech and the initiative of the French government because uh, for myself, I, I'm living in Asia since 13 years and uh, I found what did the French government since two or three years to promote the French technology, the French company for worldwide. I think this is really great idea for, for the French companies and the entrepreneurs like us. So I'm Fabrice Bossier. I'm the co-founder of Bell Wyzen. So Bell Wyzen is, um, is a smart home uh, appliance company. So we started the project in 2014 and uh, the idea was to, uh, to create so some product that we can use daily, every day and easy to use. 
so I will just present the, the, the team. So Carol is the, the CEO of the company. So he's living in, uh, he's living in France. He has a strong experience on the distribution. So Stefan also is the co-founder with me. And uh, he has also strong uh, distribution channel all in Europe. And uh, me, I'm more uh, managing all these overseas markets and uh, also all the development of our product. So the idea for Ben & Wison is also to integrate with our product some design. So that's why we sign with uh, Mr. Thomas de Lussac. So he's a designer for luxury lighting. Yeah, so for Bell & Wison, uh, how to define our product is, um, is of course, connected device, but uh, the really important thing is using the product, as I said before, uh, day, using every day the product. So the, uh, the Bell & Wison product is, uh, I think, is smart and uh, also designed and uh, simple to install. All our product right now is the bulb. You just only need to screw the bulb, and you have different functions with the LED bulb. Okay, so we launched in 2014 one, one item is the LED bulb Wi-Fi integrated with the smoke detector. So the product is connected to your smartphone and you can get information. If something happened to your home, you receive notification and you can also uh, test the smoke detector. But also you can light in your home to simulate a presence when you are not here and you receive notification if something happened. So this year we developed also new product. One product is with the camera integrated. So same function is bulb, first lighting. Secondly, we put some different module inside, inside the bulb. That's actually our patent, is only by the module. Um, and of course, this is also with iOS and Android app. So you can see Thomas, nice guy. So yeah, this is the, so easy to install. Uh, that's it. Okay, so that's it for the presentation. This is our product. So this one is the smoke detector included. Okay, this one is with the camera. And we have some more ambience product. This one is with the RGB and also is connected. So we have always the same concept. So for this, uh, we're already on the market from last year for this, these two items. And this one will be on, on August. So. We are startup, but we already start to do some, uh, some business. We are selling most of the product in, uh, in Europe. Uh, yeah, well, that's okay. Okay, so that's it for if someone has some questions. So that's where we are present today. Uh, I think we win a lot of awards in Europe, uh, especially in France. We have the L'Etoile du Design last year. We have also the Janus Prize. We have also the Lipin in Paris. We get also some, some reward. So we get a few reward in, in, in France. Uh, OK, well, that's for Russia market. So. OK, so thank you very much. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cédric Chapaz. I'm CEO of app to You company. So first of all, I want to thank French Tech Initiative uh, because uh, for us, it's, uh, it's a good way to, 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 give, uh, to get visibility. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that if you are talking about touch sense, to get visibility is quite important too. So um, maybe you, you all know the French touch the French is, uh, for example, music, uh, and it can be technology uh, too. But uh, today, uh, you will see that up to you is a part of a French touch dynamic. Um, so there is a first question that we maybe all have one time is that you can see that uh, touch screens are spread everywhere in our early life. For sure, we think about mobile products, IoT products, but it can be uh, uh, um, ATM, it can be a uh, um, um, touchscreen for tool, equipment tools, and so on. And the question is, are they really dedicated to everybody? And the other point is that these touchscreens are controlling a more complicated interface, okay? You have very various functions that you have to control in meantime. 
So how do you provide, provide a, a response uh, facing this new tactile interface uh, that will provide a new sense, which is the touch sense? So touch screens are wonderful, but, but there are some issues. Okay. So for example, you have a smartwatch, okay, and you touch the watch to select, for example, a function on the, on the tactile uh, display. But the point is that if you put your finger, this means that you hide a part of a display, maybe 20, 30 percent. So the question is how to provide this misinformation that you can get with the eyes, with the vision. And the point is that if you are missing information, this means that you are not accurate, you are not efficient when you are moving the finger. So up to you propose solutions in various set of applications. So first domain of applications is what we call ergonomy in HMI. So for example, regarding automotive solutions, so you clearly can see that in your car, the dashboard is now a big display. Um, you can think about Tesla, Tesla car, you are, it's a 21, 23 inches display size. The question is, you're driving. So this means that you can't remove the eyes from the road for safety reasons, okay? So how can you be sure that you are selecting GPS or infotainment or MP3 function on your display, okay? If you don't, uh, don't have haptic feedback, it's quite difficult, okay? Um, another example of applications, um, people who are blind, they, they cannot use display as we can do, okay? So they use audio feedback, but when you are in a public area, you have a noise around you, so it's quite difficult to use audio feedback in these conditions. And last, um, last applications, it, what we call immersive solutions. So everything which deals with augmented reality, so for example, gaming applications, okay. So the, the idea is to be really faster and more accurate when your finger is displaced over the touch screen. So imagine that you can feel a scroll wheel or slider below your finger as if it was real, okay? You really touch it. So it's really more immersive and you're, you're really in a physical world, not only in the uh, uh, virtual world. So the, uh, the idea is really to combine many senses. So for example, to combine touch and audio um, because you're in a crowd and you know that there is quite a lot of noise. So you want to get information for example, you want to navigate in the street uh, and, uh, and uh, you, you need to, to know the path to, to follow. Or if you want to combine touch and vision uh, to complement the vision channel. Um, for example, you are on the ATM and you have to enter a, a personal a security card. But you, you don't want that other people are looking above your shoulder to get your uh, personal code. Okay? So if it's visual, someone can see it. But if it's haptic feedback, active, uh, haptic code, you cannot get the feedback. You cannot get the information because that's private information. So how does it work? So up to you technology works with friction modulation. Okay? So what we do is that we generate ultrasonic vibration above the cover glass, and this ultrasonic vibration reduces the friction when your finger is moving above the cover glass. So um, this is how we provide texture rendering and shape rendering above uh, any kind of tactile interface. So it's really a new way to interact. So what do you need exactly in terms of hardware inside your product? Few things, in fact. First, you need piezo actuators, so it's small components which generate this ultrasonic vibration below the cover glass. Second thing you need, it's a driver. It's an IC component which delivers a lit, an electrical signal to the piezo actuators. And finally, what we call a microcontroller, which is, which, which is a quite standard product. And that's it. And the rest, it's application software, algorithm, 
to provide new applications and new use cases more immersive and more convenient to the user. So this technology is really a high granularity uh, 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 aptic feedback. If you make the comparison with picture rendering, okay, between a two megapixel and 20 megapixels, you clearly can see more details with 20 megapixel, and web app to you technology is the same thing. It's real time. I mean, okay, you can have a slider on the upper corner, you can have a scroll wheel on the bottom uh, corner, it's fully interactive, you don't feel any latency. It's compliant with all touch sensor, capacity, resistive, optical sensor, whatever. And it's robust. So this means that whatever the moisture, whatever the dust on the touch screen, that this is not a big deal for us. You will feel the same thing in, the, in all cases. So now, up to you offer, we are working on uh, a development kit which will be available uh, before the end of this year and which will uh, help our uh, customers to, uh, to, to, deli to deliver and to develop their own applications on various OS, Android, uh, iOS, Windows Mobile. And we are looking for partners uh, on the, uh, the next generation, which will be a smart piezo kit uh, to, uh, to transfer our technology inside touch panel uh, products. So you have to understand that this technology is uh, 10 years of unique now expertise. Uh, so this means that uh, we, uh, we have worked on mechanical areas, electrical areas, um, um, HMI areas to bring this technology. So it's not plug and play. It, it is plug and play in your product, but it's really a huge a specific dedicated know-how which has to be developed to get this uh, haptic feedback. So this is the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoy. Don't hesitate to, uh, to have a look and to have a touch to our technology at our both. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I would like to, to, do a big, to say a big thanks to the French representatives here, and Mr. Guide, and Philippe especially. Thank you very much for inviting us. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's Sick Foxes are not a, started, a startup anymore. But in our mind, definitely, we are still a startup. It's true that um, we have raised a couple of millions. Actually, last year we raised $150 million through some companies like Samsung, NTT Docomo, and uh, others, Telefonica, and a um, French company like NG, who invested in us. We are very pleased to, uh, to, 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 to receive a trust and confidence of such big industrial players. I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes explaining you what we are doing. Uh, I don't know if you are all familiar with IoT, but I'm going to uh, give you a little explanation about it. So Sigfox. Sigfox is an operator of IoT network, which means that it's a network which is dedicated for objects. Objects. A network for objects, what does it mean? If you look today, what Internet of Things is what is the internet that uh, things are getting connected to, you'll see that mainly you will have technologies like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LTE, Zigbee. The, you, you, and, and most of these uh, technologies are used in, in, in devices which are pretty, pretty, pretty big, pretty, pretty rich. We call that you know, like a computer, car, smart car, smartphone. And all these sort of things are connected to internet through some connectivity that we all know as standards in the industry. But looking forward, most of the analysts are saying that internet will, 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 be, will concern much more, much more than these kind of big devices, big, big products. They will concern small little device. 
they will they will bring smart city to 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 nation to government they will bring smart industry for all the industrial players it will change entirely where to do business how you know you are your 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 partners how you know your customers and we believe that things need a different kind of network we will need some some so a network will where where we are going to the objects will will send very small little message yeah of course if you are a trash bin and that you need that the to know if a trash bin is full or not you are not going to put a 3g or a 4g sim card inside not even a bluetooth in order to know that okay it's full the information is very 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 small so sigfox is all about that sigfox is all about bringing a technology a connectivity which is very long range it's not like a wifi or bluetooth it's very long range because we have we we have today deployment in many countries it's very very cost effective we are targeting prices which is as low as $1 a year in terms of subscription for data and we are targeting price of integration of hardware below $2 USD for a device who need to be connected it's extremely semi simple there is no pairing no password and it's extremely energy efficient so let's see let's see how we we tackle these four main pillars of what we consider being the main challenges of IoT Sigfox tries to solve the IoT dilemma the first one is to bring the connectivity to an unlimited range we are not even speaking about long range or short range anymore it's just like a cellular network wherever you are you want to be connected we started to have a deployment of Sigfox connectivity back to 2013. After one year, we deployed three countries: Spain, France, and UK. And when we are saying that, when we are saying that we are deploying the country, it doesn't mean that we have a few projects here and there or a few cities connected. We are reaching to the 92% of coverage of the whole French population. We are reaching more than 85% of 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 a population in UK and in Spain. One year later, we, are, uh, we, we had 12 countries. Today, we have announced totally 20 countries around the world, which basically means that the Sigfox network is available in the, nearly the whole of Europe, but also in the United States. This year, we are targeting to cover around 40% of the network by end of the year. More than 10 cities, including city San Francisco, New York, more than 10 cities are already connected today. In Asia, we have launched uh, recently New Zealand and Australia. Sorry, I didn't update the color. But we are targeting for this year six more countries. And a very good news for everybody who are based in Taiwan, Taiwan is on the pipeline. So Taiwan is going to be covered by the end of the year. Second point, one network, one contract. What does it mean? Especially in a country like, like Taiwan, what is very, very interesting for all the manufacturing industry, the suppliers, is that they don't need to deal with each telco and with many different chipset supplier and understand standards in every, regular, uh, in every country and, and their local regulatory structure. They just sign one contract with Sigfox and then can ship their devices, they can ship their, 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 their products all around the world when, where Sigfox is deployed. I'll give you a simple example. Last year, Samsung, Samsung um, from Korea invested in us in September and their main goal in investing in the Sigfox technology and the main value propos proposition that they saw in us was to be able to integrate a little Sigfox chipset in their washing machine, in their uh, TVs, in their aircon, all around the world. And then from anywhere, they will be able to receive information. Information which will make them able to understand their customer better, to have a better marketing but also to provide maintenance, to provide support to the customers and to know that their fridge has a problem before even the final users realize that the fridge is, uh, is, uh, is out, of, uh, out of work. And this is a kind of new business model that Sigfox can bring to the industry.
Cost effectiveness. I'm going to be quite short on this one because it's very complicated if I go to the, to the, to the details. But in short, what we, this slide is saying is that today we are having an open technology without license which let any chipset manufacturers, any module manufacturers, being able to develop our technology in their transceivers without taking any money from them. Moreover, we don't have any SIM card, any SIM card in, our, in our devices, which means that it decreases the cost of integration into your device to more than one-tenth. means that today, you can think about connecting the, what we was not connected. Sigfox is not about connecting things which are already connected. We are com completely complementary to the other new technologies, and we are maybe thinking about connecting this chair later on with a small chipset here for less than one dollar that every time someone sits on it, then you will know that, uh, that that's, uh, that there's someone on it. We are using it, for example, for car park system in the, in the city, in the road. We are doing uh, many, many uh, smart metering system. So this is all about what we are doing. I will not go to the integration costs and the private network. What we are saying is that Sigfox is optimizing today the cost of Internet of Things. We make it available for everybody. Simplicity. How do Sigfox make the whole thing simple? It's very, it's very simple. In fact, when a device is certified by Sigfox, when a device is coming out from the factory, when it it, when it's shipped out and then the, when the battery is in, it's already connected, which means that you don't need to put any password, any pairing. You don't need to, to, uh, to uh, use your phone to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to open the Bluetooth and look for it. We try to make it super simple. And that's one of the reasons why we did that was, for example, because Samsung was saying that their smart TV was a complete failure when uh, they wanted people to use their smart connection with Wi-Fi or a DSL cable in order to get information. Finally, they realized that everybody has an OTT box or an Apple TV, and nobody were connecting the wi uh, to the Wi-Fi. So having a very simple connectivity provisioning makes the other supplier and all IoT much easier to access. Now, energy efficient. That's um, at, le at, least, but at last but not least. The thing is that our, 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 our device can last with two little AA battery more than eight years. So just imagine that today you can put uh, an insurance company who will want to have some li water leakage sensor in a building. They put it there. They don't even need to uh, put some, uh, some, uh, some power line with our Sigfox technology inside and with two little batteries, this system, this sensor will send information for the next eight years if they detect a leak. The whole story is around what I just said. What I'm going to uh, summarize now in a four point is that we were the first one to discuss about LPWA back to 2009-2010. At that time, nobody, nobody believed in us. They ignored us completely. And then, in 2012, when we started to say we are going to deploy the whole world with this technology, people started to laugh at us. A few years later, we have more than 15 different technology targeting exactly the same market. And they all try to fight us, which means and prove that we were right. And Gandhi said, and then you win. Today, Sigfox is the only global IoT network which is without any frontier. We have more than 20 countries covered and more than 7 million devices already, already registered. The ecosystem is growing. We have more than 150 different devices, modules, chipset, all done by partners. And we are reaching all the verticals that you can imagine. Can it, uh, Retail, smart cities, smart home, healthcare, industrial, agriculture, automotive, smart meters. So it's not a project anymore. And this is maybe why our, our, uh, Mr. Gide was saying that we were not a startup anymore. But it's a, real, it's a reality. We can see all the devices. 
So we are now 220 employees based in Toulouse. With our, three, uh, our, two, our two founders we and, our, uh, and our deputy CEO, and we have offices a bit everywhere now in, uh, in all the continents. And this is what we did last year. $150 million raised. You can see some of our investors. And we are going to another round of investment this year. And I'm sure that you will hear a lot about us. So I think I'll summarize Sigfox in a nutshell. Hope that you uh, like it. And thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you, Mr. Guidé and the French Tech for all the amazing presentations. If you would like to have more information about the product or the French Tech, please go and visit their booth just next to Vive.